Welcome, I'm the Factual Gamer, and these are this week's gaming news. On May 29th, Friday, gaming site Polygon reported on the latest development about the lawsuit opposing Sega and Gearbox software against two plaintiffs who filed the lawsuit two years ago. The lawsuit was originally filed in the Northern California's District Court two months after the game release, and accused both Sega and Gearbox of false advertising and misrepresentation of the game Aliens Colonial Marines, because the graphical quality of the released version was inferior to the gameplay footage shown in the pre-release trailer. Last year, Gearbox had filed a motion to have them removed from the lawsuit, claiming that advertising was the sole responsibility of the publisher, Sega. Also, another motion was filed at the same time to have the lawsuit lose its class action status, which could have made the plaintiffs represent the buyers of the game as a whole. And so, it is now known that Gearbox software was indeed removed from the lawsuit, and also the court refused to classify the lawsuit as a class action. According to the legal documents reported by Polygon, the plaintiffs agreed to remove Gearbox from the lawsuit because Gearbox agreed not to pursue legal fees and a counter lawsuit against them. Sega and the plaintiffs had until June 3rd to decide whether to reach a settlement or proceed with a lawsuit, but no details have emerged about the decision so far. On May 30th, last Saturday, Dota 2's The International Tournament's prize pool passed the $10 million mark. At the moment this video was made, it was up to $10,676,000. Dota 2 players help increase the prize pool by buying The Compendium, a self-updating interactive book that tracks the statistics of the tournaments and let players make predictions and earn rewards by completing challenges. 25% of all the Compendium sales revert to the overall prize pool. In last year's The International, the total prize pool reached the $10 million, but considering the event is still two months away, this year's prizes will definitely be bigger, with Valve aiming for $11 million. On Monday, June 1st, LEGO World was launched on Steam's Early Access. The open-world procedurally generated exploration and construction game, which looks in some ways very similar to Minecraft, except with LEGO bricks and characters, is expected to be fully released in early 2016. Until then, players can buy it on Steam for $14.99. The list of features that the developers at Traveler's Tales expect to add to the game before it's fully released include procedurally generated underground cave networks, online multiplayer, pre-generated towns and villages, and character customization, among other things. On the same day, XCOM 2 was announced with a reveal trailer. 2K, the game's publisher, had teased a new project, codenamed Advent, with a teaser website in the days leading up to the release of the trailer. The sequel to the 2012 turn-based strategy game takes place 20 years after the previous game, and humanity lost the war against the aliens, who have conquered and taken over human society, and the XCOM force is now considered the invader. The new game's levels will be procedurally generated, unlike the previous title. The game's release is expected in November of this year. The following day, June 2nd, Tuesday, Valve released the new Steam client version, which now includes the refund option, which Valve was forced to create after a European Union's court ruling. However, the refund option isn't limited to European countries. According to Steam, any reason is considered valid to ask for a refund, be it because the buyer bought the game by mistake, or the game doesn't run well, or even simply because the game isn't good, and this includes games, software and even DLCs. The only two limitations to the refunds are that it has to be requested up to a maximum of 14 days after the purchase and that the game wasn't played for more than two hours, although DLCs have bigger limitations on how refunds can be claimed. After the refund is approved, it takes up to a week for the money to be returned. If the used payment method doesn't permit refunds, it will be credited to the user's Steam wallet. CD keys and game keys bought from other sources than Steam cannot be refunded, and if a person was banned by the Valve anti-cheat system in a game, the player loses the right to a refund for that game. Movies and gifts cannot be refunded. Also on June 2nd, the site DualShockers reported that the FCC, Federal Communications Commission, published the certification documents of a new PlayStation 4 model and two variants of said model, one of which has a 1TB hard drive. The other variant keeps the 500GB disk. The only two other changes reported in this documentation are a power source of 230 watts, the current model has a 250 watts unit, and also a weight change, with the new model having 300 grams less than the current one, with a total of 2.5 kilos. 
there is no indication that this is accompanied by a redesign of the console. Still on Tuesday, June 2nd, a Kickstarter campaign was initiated for The Bard's Tale 4, a sequel to the fantasy RPG trilogy created in the 1980s by Interplay. The new game is being created by In Exile Entertainment, founded by Brian Fargo, one of the co-founders of Interplay back in 1983. In 2004, In Exile produced a game called Bard's Tale, but unlike this new title, it wasn't a remake or a sequel to the original Interplay games. From the Kickstarter presentation video, it appears that the game will be first-person, even though the in-engine footage does not represent gameplay. The game will be a single-player, party-based RPG dungeon crawler, which includes not only exploration and combat, but also puzzles and riddles. The game uses the Unreal Engine 4 and is planned for a PC, Mac and Linux release on Steam and good old games, but the release date is set to October of 2017, but it's announced as an estimate. The Kickstarter campaign is asking for $1,250,000 and at the moment this video was made, the pledges were up to $1,023,000 with 35 days still to go. The game's total budget, however, is $2.5 million, with In Exile adding the other half if the Kickstarter campaign is successful. The following day, June 3rd, Wednesday, Fallout 4 was officially announced. The official Fallout site had been updated with a countdown clock on June 2nd, which ran out the following day when the announcement trailer was released. The sequel to the first-person post-apocalyptic RPG is set in the Boston area but not many more details are known about the game, although the trailer does seem to be representative of gameplay graphics. The game is set to be released for PC, Xbox One and PlayStation 4, and more information will be presented at Bethesda's E3 conference on June 14th. An official release date is not yet known. On the same day, June 3rd, Dimension Drive, the indie-developed vertical sci-fi shoot-'em-up, which had a failed Kickstarter campaign after a troll pledged a big portion of the money asked and ended up having it removed because it was fraudulent, managed to pass the asked amount of $30,000 on a second Kickstarter campaign with 12 days still to go. After the original Kickstarter campaign was trolled and failed to reach the asked amount, the gaming community showed a lot of support for the developers, Too Awesome Studio, and they decided to have another go. If the campaign reaches the $36,000 mark, the developers will add cooperative gameplay. Dimension Drive is set to be released later this year on Steam for Windows, Linux and Mac. Still on June 3rd, Wednesday, Wired Magazine posted an excerpt from a yet unreleased book about Minecraft that gives further reasons to believe Microsoft bought Mojang exclusively for Minecraft. According to the book, when Microsoft bought the company for $2.5 billion, all the employees were offered the $300,000 bonus after taxes to not leave the company for at least six months. Furthermore, according to the book, when Matt Booty, general manager at Microsoft Game Studios, went to Stockholm to speak with the team at Mojang and present Microsoft's plans for the future of the company, he kept accidentally referring to Mojang as Minecraft. Microsoft also assured that all the employees' wages would be guaranteed for two years even if the Stockholm office was closed and Minecraft's development was relocated. Notch has since added some further clarification on the bonus, stating on Twitter that half of the bonus was completely unconditional, and that the bonus had come from his personal money and not Microsoft. The book is called Minecraft, the unlikely tale of Marcus Notch Person and the game that changed everything, second edition, and it's a follow-up to a book previously released in 2013. The book will be released on June 16th. Yesterday, June 4th, Thursday, a promotional image for Uncharted The Nathan Drake Collection was accidentally leaked a bit early on the mobile US PlayStation Store. Later that day, however, Naughty Dog, the studio behind the Uncharted games, officially announced the collection. The title will collect the three Uncharted games for the PlayStation 4, running at 1080p and 60 frames per second, but without multiplayer, and according to Naughty Dog, it features better lighting, textures and models, and new trophies. The purchase of the Nathan Drake collection also offers access to the Uncharted 4's multiplayer beta. The release is set for October 9th. And those were the news. Coming up, the releases. Today, the releases are... Silvio. D4. Dark Dreams Don't Die. Turmoil. Turmoil. 
Tomorrow, Saturday, June 6th, there's a single game release, Death Pirate. Next Monday, June 8th, there's also a single game being released, Aero's Quest. And finally, on June 9th, Tuesday, the releases are Colat. Operation Abyss, New Tokyo Legacy. The Elder Scrolls, Tamriel Unlimited. And that's all. I'm planning on doing a live stream during the E3's conferences, so if you think that's the type of stuff you'd be into, uh, don't forget to join me when the time comes. I'll keep you posted about the schedules on Twitter. Also, I'm thinking of starting a new series of videos where I preview unreleased games. If you are a developer of an unreleased PC game, please contact me so we can arrange something. Don't forget to keep the subscriptions coming and share the videos with your friends. As always, thank you for watching, I'll be back next Friday, and that's a fact.